Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about Star Wars Darth Plagueis. <clears throat> but first, you know, like, uh, a little bit on the, more of the, you know, uh, like some observations, like, it seems like there's like a, like, I think I've, I think I've already talked about how, like, I was not really a fan of the, much, much of a fan of the movies, that it was always all the fluff around the movies, like, even the good ones I wasn't really all too crazy about. And, um... <clears throat> and one thing that I noticed, like, um... Is, like, whenever I'd go to, around to my uh, local library and I would be, you know, uh... <clears throat> just looking at whatever, I'd come across, like, comic books and even, like, Star Wars comics. And they seem to give, like, uh... The, the little anthology stuff. They give, like, backstories and... And just stories around pretty much everyone. Like, like I've seen a backstory around. I think it was a Greedo, the guy that the the green dude that Han Solo shot. You know, I think there was a a backstory around like Jeff Porkins. You know, he was the fat dude who was in the I think it was Red Squadron. He was with Luke fighting the Death Star New Hope. And, like, the most, uh, silliest one that just kind of stood out in my mind the most is, um, one that revolved around, like, this Jedi droid char character, like, uh, you know that little red R2 unit that, uh, that, Lu that Luke's uncle was about to buy, like, shortly, uh, but instead of R2-D2, and then he wound up, like, shorting out or something. Yeah, apparently like there was a comic where it was like uh, that thing was actually, like, the first Jedi droid. Yes, really. Because, uh, like, you know, I had some sort of organic oil lubricant that was put inside him. And it had lots of midichlorians in there. And, uh, you know, uh, and it ga gained Jedi abilities to move stuff with his mind. And, like, right before they, uh, is about to go to work with Luke... It, like, read into, like, Luke's mind, saw that he had powers, and they were thought, like, hey, cool, we can, like, fight against the Empire and stuff. And it's like, oh, no, that R2 unit seems to have, like, information on the... that could, like, help the Jedi, and they'd be saving lots of lives, and it, like, commits suicide, so that, so that R2-D2, like, goes to live with Luke instead of it and be able to, you know, do the... And, you know, like, <clears throat> save, they have, like, information on the Death Star and hook them up with the Rebellion and stuff. You know, it was just... And even though it was, like, pretty ridiculous, like, even more, like, the story was forgettable, but even, I mean, the story that I just said, is, but, it, like, I think I even read, like, a comic where they give a, a brief... Uh, backstory to like the stormtrooper that Leia shot in episode four. <clears throat> and uh yeah and you know I just think like and people call the uh brony community you know obsessive compulsive with their uh their uh you know character creations with the derpy and the vinyl scratch and you know so on and Doctor Who's and so forth, and um, and one of these uh, stories is the subject of this, because like if anybody remembers um, Revenge of the Sith, that I'm sure that quite a few remember the uh, the opera scene, right? And for those who don't, I'll put a clip up.
And that's essentially what this story is. It's an expansion on that and the story of the one known as Darth Plagueis. As uh, I'll tell you right here. Darth Plagueis, one of the most brilliant Sith Lords who ever lived. Possessing power is all he desires. Losing it is the only thing he fears. As an apprentice, he embraces the ruthless ways of the Sith, and when t the time comes, he destroys his master, but vows never to suffer the same fate, for like no other disciple of the dark side, Darth Plagueis learns to command the power over life and death. <clears throat> Darth Sidious, Plagueis's chosen apprentice, under the guidance of his master, he secretly studies the ways of the Sith while publicly rising to power in the galactic government. First as Senate, then as Chancellor, and eventually as Emperor. But by the way, in case you haven't figured it out, it's Palpatine. <clears throat> Darth Plagueis and Darth Sidious, Master and Acolyte, target the galaxy for domination, and the Jedi Order for annihilation. <clears throat> But can they defy the merciless, the merciless Sith tradition? Spoilers, no. Uh, but I'm sure you probably already figured that out from watching the prequel trilogies and the lack of Darth Plagueis in any of them. And of, <clears throat> but can uh, or will the desire of one to rule supreme and blah blah blah? Once again, you're probably already I'm sure everyone already knows. You know. <clears throat> Especially since it actually ends shortly after the events of uh, Phantom Menace. You know. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, like, pretty much starts out like how it is here, you know, like, with Plagueis killing his master and, you know, looking for his own new apprentice. And after he gets, after he recruits uh, Palpatine, a.k.a. Sidious... Then it then uh, jumps back and forth between Plagueis as he's studying the Force and midichlorians trying to become immortal, and uh, you know Darth Sidious and his plans for rising through the ranks, and you know going all the way to becoming Chancellor, and um, you know like uh, I just find this like uh, this like really interesting and just cool like. They talk about like how uh, a pair, like Sidious is like juggling like a dozen or so different lives, you know, like he's being the the uh, apprentice to Darth Plagueis, the master to Darth Maul, you know, he's you know convincing Dooku to become to you know abandon the Jedi Order, you know, he's uh, talking with various people and you know to like getting his support up, and it's just really interesting in all his intricacies, and not only that, but I also think it's, like, really neat how they really get the uh, tragedy of the Sith, you know, like, anybody that's uh, played uh, you know, Knights of the Old Republic knows that, uh, like, the main reason, like, why a real Sith Empire would never really function is because, you know, like, because everyone is always constantly assassinating and killing each other for power. And that's the reason why they have the rule of two. You know, because if they had tried to function like the regular empire with, like, an army of Sith, you know, everyone would wind up, like I said, just constantly assassinating each other and killing each other until either one of, like, three solution, three things would happen. Either one they would wind up uh, just destroying themselves. Two, you know, they'd wind up just killing all of their most competent leaders and uh, and even their own greatest warriors. And, you know, the only people that would be left would be, like, people who are more or less skilled with the, um, just killing the person that they, and, you know, that was just above them and getting the power, usually through, like, some sort of subterfuge or assassin or poison or something like that. 
and not really through, like, actual strength, and next thing you know, like, all of the competent leaders and so forth are assassinated anyway, and they're, they're killed through external force because they're so weak from constantly killing each other, like the first one, or the third one, which is uh, that you're just going to wind up with this series of, like, weaker and weaker emperors surrounding themselves by only weaker and weaker generals, until eventually the whole thing is just, uh, the whole empire is just so weak that they're eventually taken out by external forces anyway. <clears throat> and then, um, with the, uh, rule of two, even that has its own, uh, flaws, you know, like maybe you could have like a natural disaster hitting a planet and killing both the master and apprentice, thus completely destroying the Sith, like, say, an asteroid or a large storm or whatever, or, like, maybe a large bomb or something, or, like, uh, and then, of course, there's the possibility of, like, the two becoming just weaker and weaker, you know, you could have, like, uh, the, um, like, every time the, uh, apprentice kills their master, you're gonna wind, they're gonna wind up, uh, destroying, like, X amount of knowledge, and then they have to spend, like, a large amounts of time trying to regain that knowledge, assuming they don't think that they know already, enough already, and, um, and, like, what if, say, uh, you have, uh, an apprentice, an, a master that's, like, really unlucky with their apprentices, and they have to, like, kill the apprentice, then they have to, like, get another apprentice and teach that person again. And what if that person, tr and when that person tries to kill you and they're too weak to kill the master, and the apprentice dies again, then, they, then the master has to get another apprentice. And, you know, <clears throat> so on and so forth. And, you know, uh, yeah. And, um, plus, like, if I should talk about the, uh, timeline, which is at, like, the beginning of, like, every book, you know, you know, there's, uh, like, 3,954 when I'm, when the old, the old Republic Revan, so, I mean, 3, 3,954 uh, before the Battle of Yav, of y Yavin, when the I, the old republic happens, and the, there's the Sith Empire and stuff, and like when you get to like the collapse and stuff, and like so it would be like about um what is it, like three thousand years of constantly biding their t of the Sith biding their time before they are eventually to able to rise again to the <clears throat> to the galactic stage by the events the movies occur. So, you know, for like a, thousands of years. I mean, yeah, I know, so... So, like, the Sith really are not exactly much of a, a winning force. And even then, like, when they do rise, they only stay the big power house for, like, like a couple decades until the... New Republic comes in and starts kicking their asses, and yeah, <clears throat> and but um, nonetheless, you know, like I fu I really enjoyed this book with all of its intricacies and you know, the ultimate tragedy of the Sith, like I said, and all of the and uh, seeing Palpatine's rise to power as he's you know. Practice, learning his dark arts, you know, under the noses of the Jedi and so forth. It was all really interesting and cool and, yeah. And I'm not probably going to get flack for this, but even despite all of this, I can't help but think that uh, the only people that are really, like, really enjoy this are people who are already Star Wars fans, you know. If you're not a fan, you're not going to know or care who the Sith are, who the who this Plagueis is, 
you know, this character that was only mentioned in, like, one scene in one movie, you know, you're not probably not going to care much about, like, who the... about the whole, um... <clears throat> Like Master Siphodius and the rise, and the making of the and the meeting the Kaminoans, and so forth, you know. So that with that in mind, I'm going to give this a rating of three out of five. Recommended if, which is in this case, the if is if you are a Star Wars fan, you know. <clears throat> And once again, you know, like, I should say, like, my, the rating system that I kind of go by is not really based on any personal preference of good or bad. You know, it's just, you know, my personal recommendation, like, my personal feel, like, how comfortable I am in recommending stuff, you know. And that's how I felt about this, like... If you're not a Star Wars fan, you're probably not going to know or care much about what's going on. But if you are a Star Wars fan, you're going to love this a lot. You're going to think this is like the greatest thing ever. And it's real, and it really is really good. Really great. <clears throat> anyway, um, next time we're going to be taking a look at a Larry Niven novel, Ring World. Until then, see you later. Please support your local libraries and bookstores. Um, if there are any suggestions that you have, please do please leave in the comment section below. And have a nice day.